all around the country, promoting the track from their third album, while he's rather busy working on the band's fourth. We put in the single, the reason why we uh, put in the single out is because we thought it was due to him, such a good radio song. I mean, it was a song, it isn't like a beat, or it is actually a song, you know. It has substance in them. Everyone in radio ignored it the last time. We just thought, give it a remix for radio, put the singing a bit louder, and let's see how we can take it this time. And it, you know, it's getting played now, which is good. Uh, lots of people in the opposition would have said, oh, it's a year old, it's dead and buried. Whereas it's quite pleasing to hear somebody saying, oh, there's a bit more longevity and durability in our material than that. But what, I think what it is, is like anything that takes a long time, I could even, if you go into MFI and get one of the tables from there, and then go and see like a table that's been hand carved, it does take longer, and it is like painstaking, and there's like lots of stuff that goes on with it. But at the end of the day, it's nicer when it comes out. And um, I'm, I've always felt that if Bikes Music was never sort of written for money, it's never been money motivated, it was sort of writing songs for songs' sake, and they'll, they'll stay around a long time. Calling All the Heroes, for example, it's an ageless pop song. That's basically because of the quality of the song. It's interesting you should have mentioned songwriting so much there, because a lot of people have concentrated a lot on the instrumental side of the band, haven't they? On the yeah. arrangements, on production and that side of things. Do you still feel that it's songs that are arranged for musicians rather than musos just enjoying themselves? You're exactly right, you know. It's a, it's a very long story. It's basically people are hit with the technical side of it bites and it sort of puts them off and it's like underneath there is a song there. You know what I mean? And we had a lot to prove when we were young because, you know, this punk thing and we always go against the grain. We always have done. And, um, and we wanted to sort of prove that we could play our instruments. That was a big deal to us, you know. And I don't need to do that anymore now. And it's like we're, we were very young and we, we were sort of doing stuff that was way ahead of our time. And I, I don't say that sort of big headedly. I, I, I just uh, I don't have, really have any time for modesty when it comes to things like that. If I'm rubbish, I'll say, yeah. Um, we were doing things that was uh, uh, musically ahead of our time. We shouldn't have been doing that at 19 years old. And it was scary for people to see that. But um, the, what, all I want to do now is sing songs. I just want to sing sincere songs about my life or about whatever I'm going through. I'm, I'm growing up. That's basically all it is. I'm growing up. A lot of the uh, experience has been in America, which seems to have been very important to you. The Jethro Tull tour, yeah. I know, did an awful lot to establish you over there. And curiously, in the eyes of a lot of British people as well, with the credit you got from the Jethro Tull people, saying what a good band you were, and so on. That seemed to be something of a turning point in terms of acceptance you know, on both sides of the Atlantic. Yeah, it's, I do feel now, you know, with all these things, uh, see, over the past few years, it bites have been slagged off something awful. And, Sometimes I think, well, you know, why do you write that? I think I'm starting to really believe now, and this sounds silly, that it's either planetary aspects or if you want to call it, has got something to do with this. I'm on an upright now, and then um, all of a sudden Paul Rogers wants me to write songs with him. There's all these people wanting me to write songs. We're getting airplay. I feel I feel happy within myself. It, it, it just all seemed to change around. We're getting we're getting good write-ups, and I don't know why. I really don't know why. There's something about becoming established by proving that you're serious at it. I'm looking back now at the 70s, I'm not going to draw the comparisons you think I'm going to make, but a lot of people in the 70s were given sort of three or four albums to make their mark, to mature in the recording studio, to mature as musicians. And all this has come for you after Eat Me and St. Louis. And describing what you just did about your intentions when you were 19 means that in a way, You've approached it a fairly old-fashioned way, playing live, growing up live, doing shows when you were still very much learning the stagecraft, as I saw, yeah. you know, those years ago at Rock City. And it's just the very fact that you've been around for a while that has given you a lot of respectability that a, a young band would still be seen as upstarts in the similar position. Yeah, when you first go into the music business, there's so much you, you think you know it all, you always do. I, I always think I'm a fool because, like, I look back three years ago and I think, what a fool I was. And I guarantee in three years' time I'll look back to now and think what a fool I was. I'm very open to learn. Even things like growing your hair, do you know what I mean? It, it's, it's a very silly thing, but the public want that. The public, they don't want to be faced with a rock band with short hair. It isn't a rock band then, you know, it's like some bunch of wimps. It does not affect my person when I, when I want my hair's like. 
I'm still me and I'm still do, you know doing what I do. I used to have long hair and I got as soon as I had all these bands like King came out with long hair, I got it cut off. <laughs> Going against the grain, John. <laughs> <laughs> As always. Uh, the yes comparisons have been extremely unhelpful, but it's something you've almost courted, hasn't it, with you know the Roger Dean album cover and so on? Well, we didn't have to laugh just to get back at the press. We just said, you know, they call us the 70s, this is what you want, let's give me. Roger, what are you doing tonight? <laughs> Do us an album cover. <laughs> I think the yes comparisons were true, you know. We used to say, we're not like yes, but looking back, every musician plays a bit of his influences. And all, see, I noticed that every so often, within these influence songs, it Banks would poke his head through, and we're sort of trying to, we're looking out for an album with this, you know, bring the head right out and leave the influences down. Yes, and them fans like that helped me a great deal. But I'm really pleased I listened to that sort of music because it helped me be imaginative and creative because they really were for the time, and in fact they still are, you know. But um. I would like to do an album of songs that can move people. That's as original as, say, Japan's Tin Drum. I still think that's a modern record to do, and, but in a rock sense. And still based very much on atmospheres, though, yeah. as well. I mean, rather yeah. than traditional rock arrangements, I would suggest that album. Yeah. There's and a serious different. lack of songs in 1990. There is, uh, I had, in fact, I read about Christy Berg said something the day, and he said everything's just like rhythm, every, the, the whole emphasis on rhythm now, the songs have gone, you know, and, and that's so true, and it's, it's sad really, in fact, th there are some bands coming up now, there's a band called The Sundays, have you heard of them? Oh, very much so, we had them on the program last week, yes. I love that, I absolutely love that, they're writing songs, man, I'm really pleased, that, you know, someone's starting to write songs again, you got like Sinead O'Connor, that's what the world needs, really, it needs some soul in, in the music or something. So they make people move and like feel things, as opposed to just like it's stoned out of your brains and go to an acid party or something.